Hello, everybody. So week one, the first topic we are going to go through is the tooth and the tooth surfaces, because in a dental program, that's typically what we learn about first is the tooth inside the mouth, all of that fun stuff. So you all have this inside the course. You will also see your session recording from our last classes too. feel free to go through that. This is now going to be a recap on everything. And please hit the reply button if you have any questions or need additional clarification and if it's something that I can just simply type type back to answer your question I'm going to do that but if a lot of people have the same question or it's better if I do another video to explain that that's why I'm here so please do not hesitate to reply if any questions okay so let's go through the tooth quickly here so this is a 48 slide PowerPoint you have our last class recording inside the course so definitely watch that um, it's about an hour long and then if you have any questions on that let me know this is just going to be a recap of what you need to know for the board exam. So parts of the tooth, you do need to know the crown, the root, um, kind of where everything goes into place. And I find what students are most um, confused about is the cementum. So notice here you have, oh, sorry, guys, I didn't realize I wasn't sharing my screen yet. I apologize. Um, notice here, so the basics, the enamel, the dentin, and the pulp. But then you have cementum, okay? Cementum is only covering the root surface, only. So when cementum is exposed, when it comes to gingival recession, that's how that happens because it's only covering the root surface. What about thin enamel? Thin enamel doesn't mean that um, cementum is exposed unless they have recession as well, but remember how cementum is only on the root. So enamel isn't on the root. So when we're talking about thin enamel, what's exposed, it's going to be the dentin, okay? So see the differences there. And then you also need to know the apical foramen. That is at the bottom. This is where all of the nerves and blood vessels come into play, okay? Oh, sorry guys, I'm having a couple difficulties here with my screens, okay? So the apical foramen is at the bottom of the tooth here where all of the nerves and, and uh, blood vessels come in to nourish the tooth. So moving on here. So we talked about enamel, dentin, and cementum. Those are truly the main things to talk about. You do need to know what I've highlighted here in red for you. 96% is mineralized in organic um, enamel. 70% is, miner is mineralized, also referred to as inorganic dentin. And then for cementum, it's 50%. Um, so talking about the pulp, yes, you do have to know about the pulp. I have highlighted the pulp chamber for you. This is a portion of the pulp that is um, in the cavity is covered by the crown. So this is something that they really have asked on the board exam before. So that's why I kind of made a note of it. So I'm going to go back here. Um, well, I'll show you this first. So just picture this as the pulp for a second. It's a tooth within a tooth, but just to make it a bit easier for you. And then I'm going to show you guys on another diagram. So you have the pulp cavity, which is the main part. Then you have the pulp canals, which is the canals. You have the pulp chamber, which is which is only in the crown of the tooth. And then you have the pulp um, the pulp horns, which are pointed. Um, so I just wanted to show you. So let's kind of do this. So you see the pulp uh, the pulp horns are the tinier parts. The pulp canals kind of go into the canals and the pulp chamber is the main one. So I just wanted to point that out for you. So the junction of the tooth, remember you have enamel and cementum where they meet and if there's a space or not. The two surfaces, you probably all know this at this point, but you do need to know the mesial, buccal, lingual, occlusal, incisal. Make sure you know why you would refer to a tooth having incisal edges or when you would refer to a tooth the occlusal portion. For the anterior teeth, they have incisors. They have incisal edges. You would not say the back molar has an incisal edge because they don't have incisors, they have occlusal surfaces. So just make sure to know the difference from that. Um, the contact area, this is when two teeth come together. Think of when you're using the string floss, you're flossing in that contact area. Um, this is a great image too. Um, you have the incisal and the occlusal, which is kind of what I talked about. It's 
the biting forces, which I did forget to mention that earlier, so that might make a bit more sense to you. So when you're thinking about the biting forces, you want to think, okay, so we have the occlusals or the incisors. The incisal is for the interior and the occlusal is for the posterior. Um, biting and chewing. So know the difference between the different cusps, the different ridges. Um, again, they explain the different ridges here. Um, the, the cingulum, you have different grooves and fissures. So make sure to know that. I do explain that more in our class recording. So make sure to, um, to listen to that if you need to follow along a bit better here. This is a really good image too, where it's basically showing you the ridges and then kind of where there's cusps. So cups, um, cusps are more that lumpy bulge and a ridge could be seen as kind of more of a pointy point. It does say rounded, but so is a cusp, but a cusp is larger. So it just helps me to think of a ridge as being like a pointed lump, um, like a round pointed lump. So it's a bit different. Um, so make sure to know the differences here. The cingulum, which is at the bottom especially, because remember for anterior teeth, we go through this in oral pathology, oral facial, but for anterior teeth, they could have a cingulum on the lingual. Um, fissures and grooves, there are differences there. Notice how the groove is kind of in that tooth so you have pits and fissures okay but the groove is kind of right in the middle um a fossa and a pit so this is another great image as well um the fossas is just kind of in there more where a pit is just like a pit like it just kind of pinpoints pinpoints so picture putting a pin there it pinpoints like I keep doing this because that helps me when the dentist is checking for cavities they take the explorer and check along the pits and fissures um, and in the fossa too technically as well here's another good image the same one but just larger for you a definite must know for the board exam another one if you need to see it in a different way so notice how there's ridges here the cusp is pointier. It's kind of like the highest point of the tooth. You're going to have ridges and you're going to have cusps. The highest point is going to be the cusp. Um, different angles. I hope you're not falling asleep yet. These things make me fall asleep. I get tired because it's so boring. But just know every tooth is going to have different line different types of angles. Line angles are the junction of two tooth surfaces. Point angles are three tooth surfaces. Um, when you're looking at angles and junction of surfaces, a tooth has curved surfaces. Therefore, there's no corner where one surface begins and another one meets. So this is just explaining the different types of angles. The embrasure spaces, kind of that space that's in between the teeth, um, begins at the contact area. So in between the teeth and then widens to the facial, lingual, occlusal, or incisal. Um, this is where it's very important that there's no big em em embrasure spaces because then food is going to get caught. But our teeth are designed in such a way where our teeth are touching, but not too tight, but not, not touching. But then it's also designed in such a way where um, our gum in between the teeth is a certain way. It's meant to be covering those areas. When somebody has gingival recession or gum disease, that's not the case. And then the embrasure spaces are different. The embrasure spaces are something very important when the dentist is doing a filling and kind of shaping it and molding it to have it function as best they can inside the patient's mouth. So the dentition here. So you all probably know this from your first semester stuff, but read through it. Go over it again. Depending if you're in Canada or the U.S., you have different tooth numbers. You all know that. Um, so I, I love this one because it kind of shows you different ones. If you're in Canada, they're not going to use the U.S. numbering system. If you're in the U.S., they're not going to use the Canadian system. So just know what you were taught when you were in school. I teach both Canadian and um, U.S., so this is why I go through both because I'm in the habit of sometimes just going over Canadian because that's where I'm from. 
that's where I'm living now, I should say. Um, but yes, yeah, so there's a little bit of both there. Again, just some diagrams for you. The um, primary teeth, make sure to know those. They do ask questions. Make sure to know what primary, mixed, and permanent dentition means. That might sound silly, but I find a lot of students do not know this. So primary means there's only baby teeth, primary teeth inside the mouth. Mixed means there's a mix of primary teeth and adult teeth coming in, permanent teeth. And permanent means there's just the permanent teeth in the mouth. As an example, if somebody's 50 years old, you would just assume they only have permanent teeth inside the mouth. But of course, there are cases where there's like a baby tooth hanging on. That's okay. It's not a bad thing, but you just have to make note of that inside the chart. More diagrams for you guys here. You will get to know me well. I love diagrams. Here's just kind of showing things again in a different way. The height of contour is just kind of the... the not the highest point, but like the middle part of the tooth to function properly. You have the contact point, which is in between. Proximal surface means the same thing, means in between, but then you have the interproximal space, which is where the gums are going to go. I love this image too. It's just kind of showing you guys again the different line angles, um, ridges, there's the different fossas, all kinds of good stuff. Normal occlusion. So know your classes of occlusion. Know normal, class one, two, and three. Know them all. These are some great images for you. I like to offer you guys different types of images depending on how you learn. This one personally doesn't make as much sense to me as this one does. Like this is just more clear to me, but you might find this is more clear to you. Feel free to take a photo or a screenshot if you like of any of these if you want to get access to them easier and quicker for you. The curve of speed. This is our smile line. On the board exam, they tend to refer to it as the smile line. It's just the natural way our teeth are supposed to go, you know, like it's just supposed to go that natural way. Um, cross bites, again, aren't natural. Our top teeth are supposed to overlap the bottom teeth and um, braces are meant to correct things that aren't normal, not ideal. Just some other um, pictures for you guys to read through. So notice how it is showing you um, what some of the teeth are called up until the canines. Then of course you have the premolars and then the molars. Just a good kind of recap. Um, classification of caries, blacks. So make sure to know this too. Class 1, class 2, class three, class four, class five, and class six. There, I just made that a bit bigger for you. So class one is kind of like right in the pit area or the cingulum. Class two is interproximal of a posterior tooth. Class three is interproximal of an anterior tooth. Class four is on the incisal edge, again, an anterior tooth. Class five is going to be right at the margin there, and class six is on the cusp tip. Definitely know this. Pay attention. Is it a posterior tooth or an anterior tooth or both? Class one is both. Okay, so dental anatomy, a quick overview again. Definitely know your eruption patterns. They could easily have a photo like this on the, on the board exam. They've had something similar in the past where they want you to know, like they would cover up the age and say, at what age approximately is this? Well, this is age six. And then what age is this? Approximately age 20. Age six is trickier to look at, but it does offer some really good clues. Notice only the first permanent molars are coming in. How do you know they're the permanent molars? Well, I know because there's no baby tooth underneath. Of course they might, or sorry, there's no permanent tooth underneath. So you know, well, the permanent tooth has come in, you know, but notice how these teeth that are in blue is showing you the primary teeth and the permanent teeth are trying to wedge their way in there. Um, again, just kind of going over different things as well that you need to know for the board exam. Oral facial. So you do need to know the differences. This is just kind of a very easy recap of showing you what the incisors look like, the canines, the first molars, the premolars. Um, this was always hard for me as a student. In the real world, you can pick out that tooth like right away once you have practice. But just notice how the first molar looks very different than a canine, as an example. Um, the premolar looks very different than a molar, doesn't it? 
Um, so this is a top molar, but see how the first molars on the bottom look different than the first molars on the top? Study those differences. Um, the gingiva. So of course you guys need to know the attached gingiva and the marginal gingiva. This is a great image for you. Notice where the attached gingiva is kind of the harder gingiva, if that makes sense. That's just how I kind of determine it. But the marginal gingiva is going to be along the margins. This is where your probe is going to go into, that margin and that sulcus. Um, contact areas, again, I mention these so often, it's in between the teeth. Um, the gingiva and the contact area. So, so the gingiva forms around a contact area. In other words, the anatomy of your teeth determine where the gingiva sits. In bone loss, the gingiva moves down towards the bone, such as gingival recession. So it depends on how healthy or not healthy your mouth is. Um, issues that could arise. So remember when I talked to you guys about when the dentist is putting in a filling, there's embrasure spaces, so they have to be very careful with um, how they contour the tooth. Well, it's the same with the contact areas. So embrasure spaces, the contact areas. You can't, if you're working on a tooth where the interproximal needs to be fixed because there is a cavity there. Well, they're going to use bands, wedges, all of that because they need to pack that filling in such a way where it's not too tight now against the tooth that the patient can't floss, but it can't be too loose either where there's a big space there. Very, very important. So if the filling isn't done properly, anything could happen. It could be too tight where food is always getting caught. It could be too loose where now there's a space there. Who wants that? So it's a very tricky thing to do for sure. Um, so this is just showing you guys cross bites. Again, how the maxillary should overlap the mandibular. Um, contact. So this is showing you different contact areas. So notice where the teeth are kind of touching together. And then interproximal spaces again. So those spaces between the teeth are of a triangle shape. If the triangle shape is gone, you know that gingival recession is happening. If it's completely missing, there's no gum in between the teeth, then that's not a good sign, right? That means gum disease. Um, embrasures again. So showing you guys the differences between the contact areas where the teeth touch and the embrasure spaces. Um, spaces. So the embrasure spaces are either are like the lingual areas, um, kind of where like the space is happening. So I tell my students where the embrasure spaces are. Think of it like where the gum is, where the gum is and supposed to be buccal and lingual. The contact areas are where the teeth, the teeth touch. So we're not talking about the gums touching, we're talking about the teeth touching. So the contact points, the contact areas means the same thing. And the embrasure spaces we need to pay attention to when we're redoing a filling or doing a filling because it's really important whether you don't want it too loose or too tight. So that is everything, you guys, in a nutshell. A very quick recap, about 20 minutes. But do you know the tooth and the tooth surfaces? Because if any of that was confusing for you, then that is something you need to go over and review because it's a must know for the board exam. So hit reply if you have any questions. There are new updates inside our community members only form weekly. Check those. You should be getting a notification as well to your email when I do upload something. So if you don't, check your junk and spam folder, okay? And reach out to me if you need anything. Good luck studying this week and I'll see you guys next week.